Okay, this is the first episode of Visual Basic. You can see recent projects here, and if you want to create a new project, you click this button here saying create new project. Once you do this, it gives you a window and you want to select console application. Um, these these two are the most common ones. Windows formed application is making a window like this. Um, console application is like a CMD window. So you can name your project here, and I highly recommend you do. Um, unless you're just testing something quickly, then if you're making a proper project, then you should name it. So I'll call this episode uh, one, like that. Okay, as soon as you do that, it will generate some code for you. So it gives you the module, and you don't really need to know what that is yet. Um, but it gives you a submain. And blank spaces like this don't do anything, by the way. Um, just nothing. So when you click this uh, compile or play or debug button, it will um, generate a window, and it will basically execute the code from the submain and it will do whatever's in here and then when it gets to the end sub it will close itself so there's nothing here to pause it so I've clicked uh, compile it will open and close I'll do it one more time in case you missed that so if you want to stop that from happening then you put the syntax console.readline now this pauses the program but it also, it's also the syntax of doing something else um, but I'll show you what it does now so it pauses the program like this and has this. So it's basically waiting for an input, but I'll get into that later on. First, I'll show you the syntax for writing a message. Now, syntax is just the code layout specific to the programming language, if you're wondering. Um, so console.write line is the syntax for displaying text. Now, you can just write hello world. Um, that's what most programmers learn first. So, hello world, if you press compile, then it will show the text hello world. Um, this is known as a string because it's in the speech marks and it's text. Um, it's not numbers. You can store numbers like this, but you can't do maths with that because that's still text. You can convert it to maths, but that it's best to do it properly. Um, so, I'm going to show you variables now. So, I'm going to make a variable. I'm going to the keyword dim to say you're declaring a variable. You're going to give it a name, I'm going to call it var1, standing for variable1. Then you can put as to say you're going to input the type now. Um, so if you want to store text, you can do string and then you say var1 is equal to sup, like that. And then Instead of writing sup here, you can put var1. Now this will just display whatever's stored inside it. Now notice you don't put speech marks around it. If you put speech marks around it, it will say the text var1. You don't want that. You want it to say the variable. So uh, that, and that will say sup. So it says whatever's stored inside the variable. Um, you can put numbers here. Actually, first I'll show you that fact that you can put it on the same line. So you can also say sup here and that will work too so you can put on a new line or you can put it on the same line as which you declared it um, so string is the word for storing text um, for whole numbers you can use integer now this is the most common one there are eight different types and there's also boolean which is kind of similar um, integer is basically the one you want to use for numbers generally, especially when you're first starting to learn and you're not worried about resources, integer is fine. So you can say integer is equal to 4. And then you can say here, or it's always a var1, this will display 4. Now this allows you to do maths. So if you say, let's make another variable. So dim var2 as integer is equal to 5. Now in the console right line we can do var1 plus var2 and now add them together and like so. And if you put this for an and symbol then it will display both characters and that's not 45 that's a 4 and a 5. If you want to split that up with a space you can then do um, like that and that will say 
this variable and a space and this variable and then this will say 4 and 5 as a space you can put a comma there if you want whatever so that's basically how you do that um, instead of adding it up on the console right line you can actually make a third variable and add them up there so var 3 as integer is equal to var 1 plus var 2 and then you can say display var 3 so that's stored which means it's there for later on so you can use it later on you don't have to do add you can do subtract with the minus symbol you can do multiply with that symbol and then you can do divide with that symbol uh, there are a couple more things that I'll cover in a later tutorial um, so you don't need to worry about that, they're the four basic um, operations that you need to know of now there are other things other than integer say if you want to store a decimal point so 4.5 this won't let you do it now it will accept it still if you change this to display var1 it will display 4 and this is some weird rounding system um, called bankers rounding like 4.4999 would give you that 4.5 will give you it but 3.5 yeah it's kind of weird that will round up if it's even before the 5 it round up yeah it's a bit weird um, we'll get into that in a later tutorial so if you want to store a decimal about it rounding you can change this to a different data type double is the most common uh, there is something that uses less resources called single but again I'll get onto that um, so this will actually allow you to store it so if we add these again and then display var3 now this will also not work because the output is still integer if you change this to double then this will now work like so um, so let's get away from numbers for a second um, let's say if you want to get something an input from the user so you can use this syntax um, now this will take the input from the user and then store it in the variable again you can put it on a separate line you can put var1 equals tons.readline but there's no need if I'm already clearing it so this will wait for an input from the user like this and then it's you put five, it displays five. Now this is the second function of this read line. This does take the input, it just doesn't store it anywhere. This takes the input, stores it somewhere, but both of them still pause the program. Notice how it didn't display this because this has this pauses it. So that's how you pause the program with that and it also takes the input. So if you store it with the equals then it stores it. Okay, here's a quick overview of the data types. Now this may seem a bit confusing. I'll put an image, a link to this image in the description. I made this on Word or whatever. Um, so there are whole numbers. Um, this is signed and unsigned. Um, so signed means it goes from negative so much to positive so much. Unsigned means it goes from zero to, and then it goes the same amount of numbers as it has the same amount of positions as the one on the opposite side, opposite column. Um, so if you want sign to use these, if you want so if you want a negative, use these. If you're definitely not going to have a negative, you can use these, and then it gives you a higher positive bound. So there is a maximum bound. Um, if you use a lower one, it uses less resources, so that's fine. Um, Boolean is the data type which is only takes two inputs, which is true or false, which or you can do zero, one, T or F. Uh, any sort of that, so it's kind of not a number because it takes true or false as text, but it, it is as well. So that takes two inputs. This uses the same uh, rules here. You can see the number of bits here on the side. Um, here are the types for floating point, which means it's got a decimal. So you can have single, double, or decimal. Um, most commonly used double. And by the way, on this, most commonly is integer. Uh, if you're using games or something, you want to use the lower one if you can. Um, but generally, unless you're doing a really intensive program, you don't need to worry about resources so much. So double's fine. Sing single uses des less decimal significant figures, sorry, but it's still fine. Um, 
Now, if you want to hold characters, you can use char to hold one character, or a string which can hold two, roughly two billion characters. Um, and then the bits depend on how many characters. There's also three uh, types here that I'm not going to go into. This date, which stores date if you're making that um, object holds every date type and the structure. But I'm getting onto that in other tutorials. Finally, when you're happy with your program, you can click this button here, the save all, not the save button, to save a project. You can then edit the directory or whatever you want.